data that was uh, both quantitative and qualitative. <clears throat> and we talked about making pie charts and bar graphs and uh, histograms and that kind of thing. And we use the frequency distribution to help us do some of that. Uh, what we want to do now is to take a look at some of the numerical measures associated with descriptive statistics. And we're going to start with measures of centrality. So that we can see it in, um, in slide number two, what we want to do is to first take a look at the fundamental uh, numbers associated with measures of centrality, the mean, the median, and the mode. Uh, we'll also talk about how to approximate the mean for a given frequency distribution. We'll talk about computing a different type of measure of centrality called the mid-range. And then we'll talk about the notion of the skewness of a distribution. All right, so let's get started with slide number three and do our first definition here, our first formula, so to speak. Uh, we can see that for a sample of n data items, the sample mean is given by x bar, that's how we pronounce uh, the notation that we have here, x bar, and it's equal to the sum of the data values and notice this notation we use for that to write some of the data values. We write the Greek letter sigma and then the letter x. Sigma x, meaning the sum of the data values. So we take that, we add up all the data that we have, and then we divide by the sample size. In other words, the number of data items that we have. Now, we have a, a different notation if the, if the uh, data that we have is regarded as a population instead of a sample. So if we have uh, n number of population data items, notice we use a capital letter n, we can say that the population mean is given by, now notice there we use the Greek letter mu to denote the population mean, and that's going to be equal to, notice here the, the, um, the formula is exactly the same, only the notation is different. So we add up all the data items and then divide by the population size. And I think a natural question is, how do we know if we're given a sample or a population? Well, that's usually given to us, so there's no ambiguity about it. Now, let's talk about how we compute one of these now. Uh, so in the first example, in, in, in uh, slide number four, it says the nine largest oil reserves measured in billions of barrels by country and 2,000 are shown in the table. So notice there we start, we start at Saudi Arabia with um, 261 barrels per year. And then we go all the way down to Mexico, which has 29 billion barrels per year. It says to determine the sample mean and interpret. All right, so notice we don't have all the countries that produce oil, just the, um, the nine largest. Okay, so let's talk about how we want to do that. So think what we want to do. We want to add up all the data items and then divide by 9, right? So we're going to have, just to get an idea of what we're looking for, x bar is going to be 261 plus 113, and so on, all the way down to the last two, Libya was 29, Mexico was 29, and then we divide that sum by 9. So let's talk about how to do this. And let's talk about how we can use our calculator to help us out. To do statistics on the calculator, we first hit the stat button. Notice it's right below the delete key. And then we want, we want to put in some data. So we'll just hit enter on edit. And we'll put all the data in this first list right here. So bear with me while I do that. So we have 261, 113, and then 94 billion barrels, uh, and then 92 and 90, 73, uh, 49, and then the 229s. All right, so all, all the nine of the data items are in there. Now to get the mean, here's what we want to do. We hit the stat button again go over to calc, and then we're going to select this very first option that we see there. It says one variable statistics. So I just hit the number one, and then we have to specify the list where we want the data. So we want that list number one. Notice that's written in blue right here above the number one. So I'll hit 
the second key and then one. And then if we hit enter, notice what we get. We get the sum of the data, which is sigma x, 830. And then there's our sample mean right there, isn't it? x bar 92.2. So let's go ahead and finish off our, our example here. So that was 830 for the sum. Divide that by 9. And then we get 92.2 rounded to two decimal places. So let's interpret the solution. So this means that the mean of the nine largest oil producing companies was 92.2 billion barrels per year. All right. So there's the um, how we compute the sample mean. Now. Let's go one step further now and talk about what happens if we already have a frequency distribution. In other words, we have a set of data that's already been summarized for us in a frequency distribution. How can we approximate the mean from that? And that formula is in slide number five. It says, given a frequency distribution, an approximation for the mean can be summarized, uh, uh, well, the mean can be summarized for the summarized data is given by, so notice what we want here, x bar is going to be the sum of x sub m, where x sub m is the midpoint of each class, times the frequency of that class, and then we want to divide that sum by the number of data items that we have. In other words, the sum of the frequencies and the sample size. All right, and also remember, the, su uh, the sum of the frequencies always gives us n the sample size. So we're going to take, think what we're going to do for, for each, each line in our frequency distribution. We're going to take the midpoint of the class times the frequency, plus the midpoint of the next class times the frequency, and so on. So let's take a look at one of these in slide number six before we go on. It says here, the ages of U.S. prisoners sentenced to death in 1980 are shown on the table. Estimate the mean and the frequency distribution, and then interpret. All right, so think of what we want to do here, what this is going to look like. Um, first, we want to compute the midpoint of each class. So remember how to do that. We want to take, uh, for the first class, 15 plus 24. Take that sum, divide it by 2. And then 25 plus 34. Take that sum, divide it by 2. So in slide number 7, we've already done some of that. Notice here the midpoint of the first class is 19.5 and then 20.5. So we see the class width is 10. And so if you want, no, notice what we're doing now. We're taking the midpoint of the class times the frequency that was given to us in the table. All right. So that's going to be 19.5 times 184, 3,588. And then for the next class, the midpoint is 29.5. Its frequency is 334. We multiply those together. And so now, we just want to take these five numbers, add them up, and then divide by the sum of the frequencies. So remember that what that is. That's the sum of all these number of prisoners here in the right-hand column. Now, I went ahead and did that. So if we take... 814 plus 334 plus 144, etc. We get 714. So let's go ahead and compute the uh, approximate the mean now. Notice I'm saying I keep I keep saying approximate because we really don't know what the actual mean would be unless we have the data itself because the data is already summarized in uh, a frequency distribution. So we want to take uh, 3,588, that's the midpoint times the frequency for the first class, and then 9,853 for the second class, and so on. So we get down to the last one, that was uh, the midpoint was 59.5, the frequency was 10, 595, 
and then we're going to divide that by 714. That was the sum of the frequencies. In other words, the sum of the numbers in the right hand column. Well, so if we add the numbers in the numerator there, we get 21,803 divided by 714, or 30.54. So this means. This means then that the approximate age of um, a person on death row in 1980 was about 30.54 years of age.